Hi everyone, it's Diana, the Doll Fairy, and welcome back to my channel. Today's dose of doll magic is something extra special. I had the absolute honor of collaborating with two of my favorite doll customizing YouTubers, Doll Lightful and Doll Motion, to bring you the legendary Pokemon trio from the Kalos region, Xerneas, Evelto, and Zygarde. Catherine and Natalie's renditions of Xerneas and Zygarde are absolutely amazing, and I hope you'll really enjoy watching all three of our videos that make up this epic trio. So let's get started on Eveltal. Grab your magic wands, cause it's time for some doll magic. I chose Goliope Jellington because I figured her vivid magenta skin color would work well for Eveltal. I started by cutting off her hair and submerging her head in almost boiling water for about a minute to soften the head. This was my first time working with the 17 inch Monster High doll. I didn't realize that the heads of these dolls are much more difficult to work with because the plastic is harder. Even with the hot water and multiple treatments, it took me quite a long time to successfully remove the head from the neck peg. Then it took even longer to scrape out the remaining glue and hair from the neck hole. Finally, her head was all clean after removing the factory paint with acetone nail polish remover. Then, after painting the scalp a deep gray color, I'm going to start rerouting her with this shimmery silver hair with accents of a deep maroon color. Knowing what I know now, if I ever work with a 17 inch doll again, I will definitely have to learn how to make wigs first. Because the head was so firm, it was extremely difficult to plug the hair into the holes, and even when I was being very careful, my needles were snapping left and right. Finally, after much frustration, I had to devise a system where I would use a hairdryer to heat up the head until the plastic became more pliable. Then I poked through each hole with a regular needle to open it up more, before finally using my reroute tool to insert the hair plugs one by one. Then, after around 7 to 10 minutes, the head would cool again, so I'd have to repeat the process. Needless to say, this took a long time. I was debating about how much of the red to put in the hair, and finally decided just to have a bit of it at the nape of the neck. For the part of the hair, I doubled up the plugs and then split them. This was definitely the most intense reroute I've ever done. By the end, I went through almost an entire package of embroidery needles. Finally, onto the outfit. My goal for Eveltal was drama and intensity. I came up with this design, which is definitely meant to make Eveltal look like some kind of dark empress or sorceress queen. Her dress creates Eveltal's signature Y shape. To create the pattern, I used my standard method of wrapping the doll in plastic wrap and covering that with a shell of masking tape. If you'd like a more detailed look at how I create patterns for doll clothing, check out my Aqua Custom Doll video. Then I draw the outline of the garment in the seams onto the masking tape. After cutting along the seam lines, I have pieces that I can adjust and trace onto paper to create a pattern. In this case, I had to keep adding pieces of paper and tape and sketching and readjusting before I was happy with the pattern I had created. It looks like such a mess, I know. I'm kind of a messy crafter. For larger pieces that hang freely from the doll, like the wing sleeves, I use paper towels to model the shape and create the pattern. Then I trace my patterns onto this lush stretch velvet for the dress and sleeves. It looks very dark on camera, but when the light hits it, it's a deep red color. I created these black undersleeves which I will attach the huge wing-like sleeves to later. I made a pattern for these, but ended up sewing them right around the arm for a tighter fit. The most ambitious, and in my opinion, perhaps the most important part of this dress, is the dramatic pattern of squiggly lines running up the sleeves in the front of the dress. I was determined to embroider these patterns using metallic black thread. I've tackled a couple of other fairly ambitious embroidery projects within the last few years. First the cape on my custom doll of Anna and Elsa's mother, the Queen of Arendelle, and then on my 17-inch Snow Queen Elsa doll's cape. So I've learned how to create complex embroidery patterns using special water-soluble paper as a stabilizer. Then I can embroider over the paper and wash the paper away when it's finished. The paper wasn't working well with the fabric I was using, but I still needed the pattern to know where to put the stitches, so I traced over the pattern with Sharpie marker. 
The marker seeped through onto the fabric so I could follow those lines for my embroidery. Oh, and then I also had to iron over the Sharpie marks to heat set it and prevent it from smudging all over my hands. Perhaps not the best method, but it worked. Then it was just stitch after stitch after stitch for hours and hours until finally the black lines were complete. Phew! I really enjoy embroidery and I love embroidered clothing because I know how time consuming it is and how much work goes into it, so I feel like all of that effort makes the final piece more special and beautiful. Next, I decided to line the inner layer of the skirt pieces with this black satin before putting the dress together. I placed a piece of lace between the two layers so that it would hang nicely at the bottom. You might recognize this lace if you've seen my Chandelure custom video. It's the same lace. I really like it, and I'm not tired of it yet. At the neckline, I used precise cuts and tacky glue to hem the fabric and create the exact shape I wanted. Then I sewed the front and the back together, and added a piece of Velcro onto the back for a better fit. I also added some lace to the little train in the back using tacky glue, and more lace at the hips. I lined the wing sleeves with black satin as well, and placed more lace at the bottom, which is meant to be reminiscent of a Veltel's claws. After stitching the long sleeves onto the undersleeves, Eveltel's dress is finally complete. But her outfit's not quite finished yet. She still needs a veil and some tights made out of this glittery stretchy tulle fabric. For her shoes, I want her to have killer high heels, so I sculpted a pair of soles using polymer clay, and then baked them. At first I wanted to use more lace for the shoes, but then, thanks to Catherine's suggestion, realized that the dress already utilized quite a bit of the lace, and I didn't want to go overboard with it. I went with this simple but elegant crisscrossed ribbon and then basically just tacky glued the soles onto the tights since I'm not going to take them off anyway and I want to make sure they stay on. You may have noticed that Goliope's drips disappeared from her body somewhere along the way. For this, I used a brand new X-Acto knife and heated it over a candle flame to make it easier to slice through the plastic. Just be careful if you try this, because even though I was trying to take it slow, I still cut myself twice. Then I used a combination of nail files, fine grit sandpaper, and a nail buffer to smooth out the surface. And now, at last, the face up. If you've seen my videos before, you'll know that I've been experimenting with using Liquitex matte medium as a sealant for a couple of years now. But I've been feeling really limited by that lately and decided to try using Mr. Super Clear. And let me tell you, it makes a huge difference in the process. It was very new to me to do a face up this way, and it was an awful pain in the butt to have to wait for the weather to be right to use the spray outside, to keep putting on my respirator mask to protect my lungs. But wow, you could do so much more when you do it this way. I started by sketching in the outline of the eyes with the dark pink, and then went over it with the darker red when I was satisfied. I was already realizing how much easier it is to draw on the surface with Mr. Super Clear. You can see here how I was able to create depth and shadows and vivid blushing in the face because pastels stick so well to the surface. I wasn't really able to do that before. And sketching with the watercolor pencils was so easy and effortless compared to the finicky surface when you use a brush on sealant. I'm planning to make a whole video comparing both methods in the near future. After using some deep pink and red shades for blushing on the face, I turned to some dark brown shades for creating shadows on the face. I mentioned in a recent video that when it comes to creating shadows and contours on the face, I'm not really sure how to get the pastels to give me the effect that I want. Well now that I'm using Mr. Super Clear and I took it slow, really kind of paid attention to what I was doing and thought about what kind of effects I wanted to create, it worked out so much better than what I've been doing in the past. And I'm really excited about being able to create shadows on the faces now. Whenever I get to a point where I'm afraid to move on without messing up what I already have, I do another spray of Mr. Super Clear to seal what I have. 
This actually took maybe a week or so to do because it's winter where I live and you have to wait for it to be kind of nice weather with very low humidity if you want the Mr. Super Clear to work well. I continue to use my watercolor pencils to refine the shape of the eyes and fill in the whites. Then I start to sketch in the eyelashes using my red colored pencil. I brush red pastel onto the lips and then use a kneaded eraser to clean up around the edges. I kept adding more blush, coloring in the eyes, and eventually lined the eyes with black and carefully drew on her eyelashes. It was amazing to be able to draw them on like this instead of struggling to make a mark with the pencils and then having to paint over the tiny lines, which was what I had to do before. I tried to give her dramatic gray and black eyeshadow. I think I wasn't quite confident enough to use these colors more intensely, but I still think it came out pretty good. Then I decided to use acrylic paint for the irises because that's what I'm comfortable with and because the color builds up more quickly than with the pencils. First I tried this glittery paint, but I didn't like how it looked in the eyes, so I painted over that with some deep teal colors to create a gradient effect. Eveltal's striking green eyes are a really important asset to its design, so I wanted to give these eyes a really strong gradient and almost look like they were glowing with an inner fire. I don't know if I actually achieved that, but that's what I was going for. Then I painted in the pupils, added a bit of shadow to the whites of the eyes to create depth, darkened her eyebrows with some brown and purple shades, added details to her lips, and added highlights to her eyes. And her face up is done. Her expression isn't as intense or angry as I was going for, but wow, I feel like I'm improving so much. I just really like how she turned out. 
And onto my favorite part, adding the details. I plan to give Yveltal an opulent crown and veil with tons of gemstones and her signature horns. I sculpted the horns from polymer clay and painted them a shimmery black color like her shoes. I also have some beads in these gorgeous Swarovski crystals along with some black fur to go around her neck and wrists. Her veil is pointed in the front and reaches all the way down to the floor like her sleeves. I'm gluing the crystals right onto the veil itself. To protect the face and hair from the glue, I cover the doll with plastic wrap and then I go to town. Even though they were quite pricey, I'm so in love with those red Swarovski crystals because they're red, but then the facets reflect a blue color, and it's just so beautiful and so eveltal. The last detail are these crazy chandelier earrings I made by cutting some of the lace I used throughout the doll into an elaborate earring shape and adding more stones. They're so huge on the doll, but I really love them. I just feel like they're very dramatic. And here she is complete at last, Eveltal, the Pokemon of Destruction. happy with her outfit and accessories, and although I wish her face looked a bit more destructive, I'm still very proud of how her face up turned out. I can't wait to make more Pokemon inspired dolls. I learned so much throughout the process of making this doll, from working with a 17 inch Monster High doll for the first time, to cutting and sanding off the drips on her body, to doing an entire face up with Mr. Super Clear for the first time. It was also a ton of fun to chat with Doll Lightful and Doll Motion about our plans and share ideas and works in progress photos. I can't explain how grateful I am to have collaborated with them and to be able to call them my friends. I hope we can collaborate again sometime. Have fun watching their videos, and thank you so much for watching mine. If you liked it, please consider subscribing to my channel. There's so much more doll magic coming your way. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram at dollfairy, and Twitter, which I just joined, at the underscore doll underscore fairy. Thanks so much, guys. I will see you in the next video. Bye!